Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex, gold, and S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead, starting the eighth of July. I hope you all had a great trading week, and uh, if you find the content I provide useful every weekend, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the content across your social media platforms. Be much appreciated. So, um, before we get into the week ahead uh, data as well as uh, the fundamentals, just going over the usual trades uh, that I've taken over the past week, as well as uh, an update on uh, several of the trades and whether they've lost or uh, taken of taken some profit, right? So uh, quite a few trades to go over. We've got, I think, about six in total um, in terms of trades and updates. So the first one I took this week was the Euro New Zealand. Now, uh, this was... Um, there was a daily uh, supply zone. Uh, fundamentally, I wanted to be a buyer of the New Zealand over the euro, uh, really based on the fact that uh, Europe have got a lot uh, more risk events going for it. For example, the French elections, which we'll get into a bit later, as well as um, uh, they are cutting rates, whereas the New Zealand the RBNZ Reserve Bank in New Zealand are looking to hold rates uh, for a bit longer. They're going to be one of the last to cut rates. So any pullbacks uh, for me are really kind of shorting opportunities. So uh, managed to get in um, as prices pull back to this uh, daily supply zone. Um, as prices kind of came back inside, uh, this was uh, my entries. So I managed to get into uh, two positions, right? So the entry was uh, around the 176 area. And then um, the second entry was at uh, a, a buy uh, pending order, but sorry, a sell uh, limit order at around the 1772. So um, market order was down here and then prices kind of came back up, triggered me into my 50%, didn't get triggered into the uh, the final position, which is which would have been at 17744. And then as we got triggered into that second position, what I did was I took profit off at a one-to-one. -one. So as prices then came down, triggered me in and then came down on that large bearish candlestick managed to take a nice one-to-one -one trade um and now i'm only in the original market order which is now right here so that is now a profitable trade because the market order traded at 0.1 percent and the uh the 50 percent is traded at 0.2 percent and then the higher one is 0.3 percent so right now I'm up at 0.2% um, and then I'm going to start trail my stop down if, of course, the uh, European elections has a negative effect on price, which I think it should. Hopefully, we should get, you know, move down to where my target would be at 174s, uh, right? So that's really where I'm looking at, looking at 80% discounts um, as, a, as a final target. So that would be uh, quite nice. Uh, the next trade was a small loss on this now. Um, the reason why I kind of bought the Canadian dollar was because I thought the Canadian dollar at the time when I took the trade uh, would have been in a bit of a better position than the Euro. Uh, than the Euro. I didn't think they were going to cut rates in, um, in July and they were going to wait to September. Now... Um, I ended up getting in on two positions or price triggered me into two positions. Uh, one was a market order right here. And then the second one ended up triggering me in not here, not at that 50% retracement, but actually at this area here. So just before the news came out. Now, the news for the um, for the Canadian dollar was that jobs, uh, unemployment was, was, was higher. And so... Um, I got triggered in to two positions and then as prices started to reverse, I actually came out of both positions. So uh, I exited uh, both positions in and around this area here as it spiked down and started to spike back up. Um, so it wasn't a full loss and um, I ended up, uh, yeah, just taking kind of like a, a, a two small losses on the, very small losses on the uh, Euro CAD. 
So totally out of that trade. And then I obviously cancelled my final position as well. So uh, limited my losses after the news uh, went against the trade. But I was also in a New Zealand CAD trade. Now, um, what had happened here, right? So this was from the previous week in July. Um, the uh, I managed to basically get a break-even trade. So as prices pulled down, back last week right so on the, on the friday um managed to get a one to one on this one as then prices kind of spiked up so then i was in two positions which was the uh which was going to be the 50 percent and the market order um and then those two actually uh didn't manage to get any uh, profit off of those and then as prices came in lower this week right it stopped me out right there right there and so managed to win one lose two but if you do the maths it was a break-even trade because the lower position was 0.3 percent and i lost 0.2 and 0.1 meaning that i banked 0.3 percent but then lost 0.3 percent right so break-even trade overall so even though i lost two positions it was actually a break even trade um and then we managed to get in on um on wednesday now uh this was during a live group call so i have live calls uh with the with the guys and and, and girls as well um on a wednesday uh, typically and during this call, we were doing some analysis and managed uh, some of the traders managed to get in on this as well, did the fundamentals on this. And um, we ended up obviously making a little bit of money. Now, I've taken 50% uh, profit off. I didn't manage to get, in fact, let me just delete this. So delete that. Let me just not confuse you. All right. So prices didn't quite pull back to that 0.2%, unfortunately. So I didn't manage to get two positions in. Um, prices have come close to my one to one. So late on Friday, I managed to just take 50% off, right? So I took 50% profit off just to get myself to a, a break even position. And then what I've done is I've canceled these pending orders. So I'm not, I don't think prices are going to pull back. Um, and this was based off of obviously Friday's, uh, Canadian dollar data, which came out obviously unemployment rate came out higher than forecasted so this one when and actually ended up going in my favor looking to swing trade this a lot higher right a lot higher so you know profits potentially up to this area here but if i'm in one position then what i like to do is get myself to a break-even position now you can get yourself to break even two ways most traders typically will move their stop loss up to break even right there um but that's not the way that i like to do it um, I prefer to take 50% off. So for example, if, you know, just doing the maths, um, you know, I'm taking basically 0.05% off if that position is worth 0.1%. And then um, I can basically leave my stop loss in a safe place. The reason why I don't necessarily, um, you know, move my stop up to break even because prices can easily come back, you know, stop you out and then move higher, right? Whereas if you are in a position where your stop loss is, you know, in an area where you're definitely going to be wrong about the trade, you give it a bit more breathing room, right? Makes sense to me. Um, again, uh, horses for courses, you know, you don't have to necessarily agree with that. Um, but that's the way that I like to uh, get myself to any kind of break even trade if I'm in one position, if I haven't taken profit. So uh, or I haven't entered into multiple positions. So for me, this uh, uh, this trade is now at break even and I'm looking to basically take the rest of and swing trade the rest of the positions up and trail my stop up as we uh, as we go. So uh, there's the New Zealand dollar CAD um, looking at the New Zealand dollar Swiss. So again, this was from um, I've been holding this trade for a while now and um, uh, the uh, position that I'm in is that I have now taken profit on one of the positions. So the 50% pullback that happened that occurred around the 19th of June, uh, I managed to take profit just before it was around here. It was just around the uh, 55 round number. Um, I thought I would take it there 
uh, because there could have been some a bit a bit of resistance. Plus, as well, there was the um, uh, the Swiss franc inflation data that came out, and I thought that it may go against me. So I thought, let me get to a profitable position, right? Which was uh, really about a three and a half to one. So managed to take profit off there and that position, but I still hold an open trade on the market order, the original one. So regardless now of whether this comes to stop me out, if this pulls all the way back, which I don't think it will now because of the fact that the um, Swiss franc inflation came out lower than expected, than forecasted. So that keeps the Swiss franc um, on the back foot. But even if prices came down and stopped me out, um, it wouldn't really matter too much because if, if anything, I've 3 x my 0.2% position and my 0.1% position is, um, you know, I'd only use 0.1%, right? So I've actually managed to uh, bank um, uh, 0 0.6 or 0.7% off of that 0.2% uh, uh, 3 to 1 trade um, as well as... Um, Sorry, yeah, as well as uh, the uh, 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 this open position right here. So that's decent. So that's a trade there. Uh, update on silver. So again, silver looking really, really nice. Uh, silver to uh, the euro. Again, the reason why I'm taking this is because I think the euro is a sell and silver is obviously a buy. So um, again, just a bit of an update. Prices pulled back to this area here and then um, managed to actually hold this trade up until the 50% uh, uh, of the of the auction or out of the range. So that's the range higher, range low. That's a nice profit target. Managed to reach that on the Wednesday. Um, so that was a that was a nice trade. And uh, now I only hold one position, which I'm actually looking to hold uh, for a bit longer. My original target was actually at the 80%, but now um, I am, I've cancelled that. And hopefully if the euro does come in weaker due to their political uh, situation with the government, I think hopefully we should want to ride that even more. So then that's going to be a very, very nice trade to the upside, hopefully. So let's see what happens with that and finally the australian dollar um finally took the rest of my profit off this has been a very profitable trade um managed to get in, in all three positions taken profit along the way and the final position um my original position actually was around the 80 percent mark but um uh, i ended up taking profits just before that in fact I did post this in the um in the in the Discord room. Let me just have a little look at where it was. Yeah, so here it is in the uh, in our in our Discord members group where um I said I was also taking profit on the Aussie Swiss. So that was on the second of uh July. So the reason why as well I took profit on this before my original target was really because uh, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, bullish uh, closes. And whenever you get uh, a run like that of uh, you know bullish or bearish closes, typically that's unsustainable, right? Prices typically then start to roll over. So I was getting a little bit worried as to you know when prices were going to maybe pull back a bit. So I figured that... Um, I was only about, I said, I said I was 27 pips away from my original target. Um, I said, but I'm happy taking profits, right? Because the risk reward was 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 really good. So um, sometimes, you know, you can take profits early. You don't necessarily have to be 100% mechanical, but as long as you're happy with taking profits, prices did actually end up going higher, right? And actually reaching my original profit target. But for 27 pips, it may have, you know, pulled back. So um, if it had, if it, if there had been some bearish days within that, you know, move up, I would have definitely held for a lot longer. But um, yeah, fundamentally, again, the Australian dollar uh, being the buy over the Swiss francs. So uh, nice, nice, profitable week. Um, and uh, yeah, those are the trades uh, that I am in and that I have taken. 
and so yeah that's pretty much it so let's get now into the uh the analysis and the week ahead starting the uh the 8th of july and this comes from tradingeconomics.com and it says and they say in the united states attention will be paid to the release of cpi and ppi data for june followed by federal reserve chair powell semi-annual testimony on monetary policy at the senate banking committee additionally Investors will closely follow the Michigan Consumer Confidence Report. In Europe, the spotlight will be on the second round of parliamentary elections on Sunday. Elsewhere, interest rate decisions will be announced in New Zealand. In the UK, key data points include GDP for May, goods trade balance and industrial production. China will release its inflation rate, PPI, new yuan loans and trade balance data. Australia will report on NAB business confidence and Westpac consumer confidence. And Germany's trade balance will also be closely monitored. So lots going on there this week, um, especially uh the special attention being paid to the release of the CPI and PPI data for June. Now, talking about the dollar, let's get into dollar analysis and looking at the dollar index. And the dollar index, this is the equally weighted dollar index. And uh, if you want to know why I use the equally weighted dollar index and why I think it's better than the DXY or the USDX, there is a link at the top right hand side of the uh, screen right now. And uh, click on that and I go over my um, uh, my analysis and really how to uh, add this to your charts. Now the dollar uh, fundamentally did actually have um, uh, not great news. It depends on whether it's, it's if you're long or short, right? If you're short the dollar, then it is great news. But um, uh, non-farm payrolls and unemployment, um, as well as average hourly earnings came out yesterday. And it says here that US hiring moderated in June and prior months were revised lower, bolstering uh, prospects that the Federal Reserve will begin cutting rates in coming months. So non-farm payrolls rose, rose by 206,000 last month and job growth in the prior two months was revised down by 111,000, the Bureau of Labor Statistics said Friday. And so the unemployment rate also rose to 4.1% as more people entered the labor force and average hourly um, earnings cooled. So everything suggests that the, uh, the Federal Reserve is likely to look to cut rates um, in September. So this is the FedWatch um, uh, tool which is basically uh, which basically shows the probability and what investors are really thinking about whether the uh, what the central bank is likely to do with monetary policy whether they're likely to you know ease uh, hold or hike and so what we have here is actually um, at the top right hand side there's a 77 0.9% chance now of an ease so there's 22.1% chance of a hold and so an ease would reflect the uh, a devaluation or should reflect a devaluation in the dollar and you can kind of see it if you go down here when you see a month ago the 6th of June um, the chance of a 25 basis point cut was at 55% a week ago it was at 57.9 and then yesterday um uh, which is which was basically Friday is now at seventy two percent, and you're seeing that reflected actually on the dollar index, right? You're seeing that being priced into the downside, right? Now, um, depending on what happens with CPI and PPI, if that confirms, if data, you know, inflation data starts to cool, meaning it comes in a bit lower, then um, of course you're likely to see the dollar still continue to the downside um, uh, this week, um, or you might see if price or see uh, inflation uh, does come in a bit higher then in fact you might see a cap in the downside of the uh, of the dollar but um i think there's is there's reasons to buy or sell the dollar right or buy and sell the dollar um but again you would need the data to support 
uh, your your buyers. So if you are looking to buy, uh, maybe you think that uh, inflation is going to be a bit more sticky or coming a bit higher, then actually now is a decent time to look for some buy trades on dollar crosses. Of course, you're not buying on the uh, on the dollar index. You're just looking for uh, some buy trades as we are in a bit of a demand zone. And if you're in a bit of a demand or supply zone on the any dollar cross, then you're looking for buy trades as you do. The dollar is a, a bit of a bargain price, right? Um, if you're looking to sell the dollar, then you're looking at a bit more of a pullback up into supply and then look for uh, to go to any kind of dollar cross a dollar pair and then look for a short trade uh, there. But I think overall, I think the dollar as we get closer to September is looking a bit more like a sell, but not necessarily against every single currency. You know, current trading currency pairs is really about, you know, uh, divergences. So looking for uh, the best currencies to trade against the worst. Now, the dollar might be, you know, and the Fed might be cutting rates, right? That's fine. But if you have uh, another central bank that is cutting rates more than the dollar, then you would still want to buy the dollar, right? Because the, 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 the Federal Reserve are cutting less than another bank, right? But ultimately, you're looking for divergences where you're either seeing uh, central banks either hike rates, right, or look to uh, uh, hold rates. Now, I'm going to get into the Japanese yen uh, in a sec, but there are obviously nuances that you must be aware of. Even though the Bank of Japan are hiking rates, um, the, the, there is uh, something called the, uh, the carry trade, which I will explain in a sec. But typically, usually you want to be a buyer. Um, or and the seller of uh, of currencies where their central banks are diverging in monetary policy. Um, so getting into the dollar yen now, um, counter to what I just said in terms of you know the the, the Fed are looking to uh, cut rates at some point and the, uh, the 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 Bank of Japan are actually looking to high rates. Why am I not short? The, or why don't I have a short bias on the dollar yen? And it's really because of something called the carry trade. The carry trade is basically where investors make money on a difference between um, between interest rates and, and, and yield. So at the moment, the dollar interest rate, uh, the, the, to borrow the dollar or to, if, you, if you're investing in the dollar, I think is at 5.25%, uh, right? 5.25%. Whereas the the um, the Bank of Japan is at zero percent, I think. So if I buy dollars, right? Remember, interest rates are the cost of borrowing and lending money, right? So I can borrow, right, at zero percent in terms of you know the yen, convert it into dollars, and basically get a yield of five point two five percent. So I'm borrowing for nothing and making. 5.25%. That's what's known as a carry trade, right? Now, although the Bank of Japan are hiking rates, right? They're hiking rates, A, they're hiking rates slowly, and it's not really enough to kind of close the gap between the two in terms of, you know, even if they're going to be hiking by 0.1%, what is going to you know make traders come out of a higher yielding asset and such a high yielding asset as the you know the US dollar and go into something where you're only making necessarily you know 0.1% if they hike to 0.1%, right? It's really not. And so um ultimately, even if the Federal Reserve cut rates to you know 5%, yeah, they cut rates by 25 basis points, is that enough to draw traders into buying the yen? over the US dollar? And my answer would be no. So although yes, typically you do want to buy a bank and a currency where the central bank is hiking rates, there is this as well that you need to be aware of the gap between both currencies in terms of uh, yield. So ultimately, um, I think the path of these resistance is still to the upside. Uh, there is actually a demand zone right here that you can look towards buying, but my preference would be a bit more of a deeper buy, uh, maybe down into the 159s, uh, 15, 159.50s, 15, yeah, 159s, around within this demand zone, I'd be looking for a bit more of a, a buy to buy the uh, dollar over the yen. But if you do want to be a buyer of the yen, then you're looking for uh, really a sell 
uh, back up to that area there. Now, uh, moving on to some yen um, fundamentals as well, because obviously we have to back these ideas up with um, what the experts and analysts are saying and banks are saying. It says here, Vanguard sees the yen at risk of falling towards 170 per dollar if potential bank of Japan policy changes this month fail to boost the country's bond yields. And so scrolling down, it says here, traders are positioning for further declines in the yen over the next 12 months amid a sharp increase in demand over the last two weeks for call options to buy dollars and sell the yen. And that's really due to, again, more of the carry trade idea, right? And the yen is handicapped by the prospect of Bank of Japan policy moves being gradual, which is keeping the country's bond yields well below other markets. So exactly pretty much as I was saying, gradual increases may not be enough to entice investors into buying the yen and selling the dollar. So ultimately, the dollar for me is still likely to be a buy regardless of whether, you know, the, the Federal Reserve are cutting rates uh, or looking to cut rates in September. Looking at the dollar Swiss and similar to the yen, um, the dollar yen, I do think that the dollar Swiss is more of a buy. Um, again, although you do have um, uh, the Federal Reserve cutting rates, the Swiss franc are looking to cut further. So I do think any of these zones are, you know, uh, a buy, uh, should be buying opportunities. I'm not saying that it's going to bounce here. I have no idea. And it depends on what, you know, your entry is. I know what my entry is and my entries are and uh, for the reasons why I'm looking to potentially buy here. But ultimately as well, um, it does depend upon uh, short term sentiment. You've got obviously chair uh, Fed Powell's testimony on the 9th of July uh, and you also have his speech and we have inflation on the uh, the Friday so <clears throat> you know depending on what happens with inflation um, you know we could either go you know towards the downside or of course this could be really nice towards the upside and a little bit of a tip um, what I typically tend to do when there's you know um, news coming out that the market is waiting for, I typically usually trade uh, or look to enter a trade at least um, maybe around about 24 to 48 hours before. Sometimes I enter after, you know, the news and the dust has settled. But if I'm looking to enter into a trade, I'm not going to enter in on, on a Monday. Um, I'm going to enter closer towards the time. So, um, that's something that I do. So I will be, I won't be entering, you know, right away. Uh, on Monday or Tuesday, maybe towards maybe Wednesday and Thursday. Of course, it does depend on what Jerome Powell says, but I think that'd be more sentiment driven because ultimately the data is what really matters. Powell can say what he wants, but if the data doesn't support what he's saying, then the market is just going to price in either a higher or a lower dollar. So, um, yeah, that's where we are with the uh, the dollar and the Swiss franc. The Swiss are still, you know, inflation came out lower this uh, this week, so that it puts pressure on them to continue to cut rates. Um, dollar CAD and the dollar CAD has pulled back a bit. I do think that the um, the Canadian dollar now uh, they should potentially want to cut in July, um. And so I think the upside potential uh, is really for the dollar. So the path of these resistance should be more to the upside for now. But of course, it will depend upon what goes on with inflation on that Friday. Was it Thursday? Was it Friday? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Apologies, I, was, I said Friday, but it's Thursday. So Thursday is the day of the release for the uh, for inflation. Um, and again, if that comes out lower than expected, we could actually see a little bit lower. But ultimately, I do think that the uh, the um, the dollar is more of a buy than the Canadian dollar. If the Canadian dollar is um, looked at as uh, the Bank of Canada were looked at as uh, as cutting in July, right? Because they're going to be cutting first. And um, so I think that's a, a weaker, um, that should be a weaker currency and turn out to be weaker for the uh, for the Canadian dollar. 
So any pullbacks, I think, are really nice buying opportunities um, for the uh, if you are looking at trading this pair. At the moment, I'm not really looking to trade this pair. I think there are better uh, pairs to to look towards uh, buying uh, um, buying against the Canadian dollar, like for example the Australian dollar or the New Zealand dollar. Even the pound uh, is, is probably better. But the uh, I do think that the um, this is a decent uh, decent trade if if again you're anticipating a higher uh, higher inflation rate. Pound dollar, um, of course, the, the dollar kind of weakened against the pound. The pound has had some, you know, uh, decent news in terms of uh, government stability. So when it comes to government stability, um, it says here that dull politics is good for investment, says Jane Foley, head of FX strategy at Rabobank. There could be a bit of a rally for sterling on the election results uh, on the hope that we can get uh, sorry we can see a few years of boring stable politics and therefore an improvement in investment growth so ultimately um, that you know st stability in government is great for um, uh, a an economy as well as the currency right and um, and obviously we know now that um, Labour got the majority, pretty much everything came in as expected. And so the pound um, is likely to be a buy, but I would it would be more of a buy on pullbacks. So um, you really want to wait for prices to pull back. If you are looking to be a buyer of the pound against the US dollar, then you're really waiting for a pullback there. If you're looking to be a seller of the pound and a buyer of the US dollar, then I think actually now is actually quite a nice time. When I say now, I'm talking about this this area, you know, 128s to 128s, 50s. You can even drag this up to these highs as well. I think those are decent areas to look for. Uh, sell trades and move that up to there. Yeah. So again, you'd have to really kind of find the reason as to why you want to be a buyer of the dollar and you think that the pound is likely to um to sell off and uh, before we get into the pound yen just wanted to remind you guys that the supply and demand uh, mentoring and the fundamental mentoring that I offer and discord group um, the it closes on the 8th of July which is Monday which is a few days from now so if you are uh, considering joining you only have a few days left to decide and the next time I will open will be more towards the end of the year possibly October or November and so um, yeah it's really uh, I say it's important but it's uh, something if you do want to join definitely uh, look to do that and not only will you get access to the um to the uh, discord group and as you can see we've got 25 traders online as well as uh, 163 traders offline so it is a group that is actively uh, traded and we you know we chat and do the uh, analysis it's all here um you get uh, access to um uh, all of the the uh, course material and all my strategies as well as the fundamental analysis um as well as uh, members areas uh, like for example um, here where we have, I have my trading videos members area and also as well if you are a member by the way go to the trading videos channel and you'll get uh, in-depth analysis uh, on all of the currency pairs on YouTube I typically just kind of you know uh, breeze over them but you'll get expert analysis and in-depth analysis on not only the fundamentals, but also as well, all the trade setups that I'm in, into, as well as any of the other videos and group call recordings that I have on Wednesdays. So these are, you know, uh, videos that um, I only really record for the uh, for the group and we have tons and tons and tons and tons of videos right these these are like years of videos that you can go back to and learn from so you get access to all of that so again if you're sitting on the fence um you can still sit on the fence if you want but uh yeah i'm i'm closing in the next uh couple of days and again i won't be open until maybe october or november towards the end of the year so if you are joining i look forward to working with you and taking you to the next level with your fundamentals and technical analysis if not i do sincerely wish you all the best and so getting back to the analysis go into the pound yen and the pound yen just keeps going higher and higher right and this is again due to 
um, the carry trade really. Um, so yeah, waiting for a really a pullback on this down into maybe the 203s um, is going to be the first opportunity to look for any kind of long trades. And then you may actually look for uh, potentially if it doesn't first around there, uh, the 201s. So uh, by the way, the, uh, the Japanese yen is still at risk of an intervention right it's still at risk of an intervention um as it starts to get weaker but at the same time um i think that intervention uh will just allow traders to continue to really kind of buy for cheaper so again part of this resistance is still to the upside on pullbacks for the pound yen uh, looking at the euro dollar now the euro dollar um i would have thought that this might have rolled over a bit this week um but it hasn't but i do expect it to reason being is because again uh thinking about what's going on in europe right and let's go to eurozone and we have obviously the french elections and it says here whatever the result it is clear that france will be more difficult to govern says arnie christian rayner uh, head of financial markets at Berenberg Bank. The outlook due to the upcoming political change of direction in France continues to threaten the euro with headwinds. However, it should be noted after elections, uncertainty tends to decrease and volatility falls. Uh, well, uncertainty for sure. Um, volatility will fall often regardless of the outcome and Berenberg anticipates the euro to fall to 106.55 in the short term time frame and so again sunday's election regardless of what happens so really the two outcomes are bearish for the euro so the outcome is that le pen gets the majority and that would be bear or should be bearish for the euro and the 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 other scenario is that there's a hung parliament so there's no outright majority for le pen's party and even with a hung parliament um it's going to be uh, a lot of uncertainty as to you know how you know the french are going to get policies through and what the policies will be and so that creates again lots of uncertainty whereas again you compare it to what we you know have just um analyzed with the pound where jane foley from rabobank was saying you know that stability is good for a currency right a majority government is good in france it's different right and so um that is going to weigh or should weigh on the um on the euro um so i i do expect some downside potential also as well i was saying to the guys in the group that i actually uh, may you may expect prices to pop up let's say for example either one of those scenarios comes out um on sunday and the euro actually goes higher right it pops higher it gaps higher um it doesn't unless you know unless macron gets you know the majority vote and it totally wrong foots all of the polls um i think that the pop-up is just a way of basically stopping out anyone who's who's going short on this and then prices should want to move to the downside that's my expectation i don't know whether it's going to happen but those those are the probabilities and so with that being said i would rather uh, look for short trades regardless of whether you know prices you know go down immediately or they gap up and then come down so if it gaps up then i'm looking for short trades anyway so um that's really the play for uh the euro whether you want to do that against the, the the dollar is another thing right so um but i do think that this should be driven more by euro uncertainty than dollar fundamentals as well as uh what's positive for the dollar is that there is uh, uh donald trump getting into uh, uh potentially getting into the office is actually seen as a dollar positive euro yen euro yen again um again i would have considered uh this to not actually happen i thought the yen would have actually strengthened on risk off sentiment but we haven't seen that but of course we could see that now uh coming into sunday's open and that could end up dropping uh further so if you are looking at buying the uh the yen then i think the euro would be really the one to buy it against at the moment um but uh yeah not really a pair that i'm interested in i'm in other 
you know, Euro uh, short trades, like, for example, the Euro uh, New Zealand, right, which I just went over at the beginning of the video. Um, but nothing really to say about that, that, that Euro, Euro, um, Euro yen, uh, Euro pound. So Euro pound, uh, really should the path of these resistance should be to the downside. You've got a stable government in the UK and you're in more certainty where you don't have that in the, um, in France, right? So really you should be looking for some sort of pullback into a level before looking at getting short, that'd be uh, really what I would expect to happen. So any pullbacks, I think are gonna be nice uh, shorting opportunities on that Euro pound, pretty simple uh, stuff there. There is obviously as well, a bit of uh, confluence with some support and resistance within that area. So uh, yeah, not very nice. Technically, if you've missed out on this short trade here, then you may wanna get involved in if it, if it does pull back. Uh, Euro, I'm sorry, Australian dollar, US dollar, and um, again, weakness in the US dollar is uh, is causing this pair to go uh, a lot higher. And so, I do think that if you are shorting the uh, the uh, the dollar, then the pair you want to do it against, or the currency you want to do it against, is the Australian dollar. So, any pullbacks down into these zones. I think are going to be nice buying opportunities. Um, the Australian dollar is the uh, only other central bank where the market says that there's a possibility that they could actually continue to hike rates. So let's see what happens there. So there is a bit of divergence there and it's playing out again on the currencies. Uh, looking at gold and gold, again, benefiting from um, the, uh, the dollar weakness at the moment. So any pullbacks into demand uh, should be actually a, a nice uh, a nice buy. There's a nice bit, a bit of hidden demand there. So the earliest to look for any kind of buy trades would be back down into the two, three fifties or just below that if you are looking to buy gold. Reasons to really kind of buy gold are that, um, you know, the Federal Reserve are looking to cut rates at some point. The world is cutting rates. Um, in terms of uh, you know the um, uh, the G the G seven the G eight uh, currencies um, and um, yeah whenever you have an environment where central banks are cutting rates then uh, precious metals typically do um, benefit so uh, part of these resistance I think is to the upside on some pullbacks. And so even if the dollar kind of strengthens a little bit, I do think that any moves to the downside should be buying opportunities. And the S&P. So the S&P, um, last week I was thinking that this would be actually a decent area to look for short trades if you thought that there was going to be a delay, sorry, excuse me, in, um, in, um, in rate cuts. But because the news came out, uh, recently, obviously, supporting rate cuts in September, right? Um, this has continued to move higher. So uh, the stock market typically moves higher based on um, uh, rate cut expectations. And so, uh, yeah, we've got these levels here. And it's just really a case of waiting for some sort of pullback into a zone, into one of these zones before looking at going long. I know a lot of traders are, have been trying to short uh, the um, the S&P, thinking that it can't go higher. But um, yeah, this is where fundamentals kicks in, right? And understanding what's going on and what influences it. And so um, rate cuts are coming and the, likely, the more likely rate cuts are, is the more you will see uh, the S&P look to go higher now of course there might be a period where you get a massive pullback and that's probably just clearing out all of the uh, short trades and all the stop losses below you know these swings but as long as um, the Federal Reserve are looking to cut rates and on the cutting cycle then um, the S&P and uh, other indices should want to continue moving higher so the deeper the pullback the better because that means that you can buy for cheaper and have a lot more potential upside, right? So uh, that's really, I think, the path of least resistance for the S&P. So again, don't forget, we've got the Trading 118 Mentoring. If you want to be mentored by me, uh, go to the website, sign up, and I look forward to working with you. And um, 
yeah, all the best. Take care. I hope you have a great trading week if you don't sign up this week. And uh, all the best.